Welcome. We're Matthew and Marianne. We are Alexandra, Sorin, and Baby Levi. We are some members of the Connect group here at Loughton Baptist Church. I'm Brian. And I'm Pat. We're glad that you're joining us online and hope you are all able to join us on Zoom before the service. If not, you can find the details below to join for next week. Yes, a very special welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. We're so glad you're here and have chosen to be part of our community today. If you'd like to find out more about us, you can either check the description box below. You can also find out more by visiting our website, loftonbaptistchurch.org. Now let's continue our worship with song and the Word of God. Let's sing the song, Holy, 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 a vow that is tested like a covenant of old your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon there's mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and it's why I see your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your Father, the Open. shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from my shades for you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and know by her true name and it's why I sing your praise will be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be praised, you will be praised. Oh 
open life and death. What truth can come the troubles? God is good. God is good. Where is His grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's love, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above the stormy trial, who stands the waves that bring us high to the shore, the rock. Like you do, God, I look to you. You're where 
Father, we come in Christ to bring our worship to you. As we have sung, we acknowledge also in prayer that our God reigns. You, Father, Son and Holy Spirit are worthy of all our praise and all our adoration because there is none like you. High above the heavens, you reign. High over the nations, you are exalted. Our communities, our homes, our entire lives, you are the sovereign one over all. Forgive us then, Father, when we act as if this is not the case. We persistently worry about our future. We may panic when our plans don't come to pass as we had hoped. And although these reactions may seem insignificant to us, it points to attitudes that have been cultivated within us that are unsurrendered to you as the one who is Lord over all. Have mercy upon every one of us. Forgive us, we pray, when we fail to trust in your everlasting love for us all and your sovereign rule over all things. We surrender afresh our entire lives to you that we may serve you wholeheartedly, assured of our forgiveness in Jesus Christ. And so we thank you for the gift of salvation that has come to us in his name. We are able to confess because we know how compassionate and forgiving you are of us through Jesus Christ. He is our assurance of how faithful you are to us and how graciously kind you have been and will continue to be towards every one of us. And so in that likeness, we seek to be merciful to others, especially aware of those who by their actions towards us have added to our worry, have added to our panic. So before you, Father, we forgive others as you have forgiven us. And where we must now make things right, we ask that you give us your spirit that we may be in practice what we are in our status in Christ forgiven because we are forgiven. As we turn to the scriptures, looking to be inspired once again for mission here in our communities and also around the world, help us to be galvanised to tell others of the good news of Jesus Christ from this place we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us online this morning. Good to have you watching with us. We're going to be hearing from Mark Craig this morning. He's recently retired as Director of Communications from BMS World Mission, and he's going to be sharing more about their work around the world. We are supporters of BMS, and that includes some friends of ours, who are working in some very challenging places around the globe. If you want to find out more about BMS World Mission and all their work, 
then you need to go to their website. It's bmsworldmission.org. Now, before I hand you over, however, I want a quick reminder given to you of the Pentecost 24-7 week of prayer that begins next Sunday, the 16th at 7 p.m. We're going to be gathering online and in person, hopefully that week, with the goal of praying for five people to come to know Jesus Christ. And because it's in the run up to Pentecost as well, we're going to be waiting on God and praying, come Holy Spirit. We would love for you all to be a part of this. The timetable is up and running. Do take the time to sign up for an hour. Can I convince you to do two, maybe even more? You can do so by yourself. You can do it with friends. I want to encourage you all to be a part of this opportunity so that we can make a chain of prayer from seven o'clock next Sunday evening through to the following Sunday at seven o'clock in the evening as well. We are doing this every year now. It's become tradition for us. So if you've never done it before and you'd like to give it a try, let me encourage you to do so. But for all of us, perhaps this year, again, we can set ourselves some personal challenges to learn to grow in prayer that week too. So you need to decide who your five will be, or at least five, should I say. I know how popular some of you all are. Once you've done that, let's sign up for a time slot and let's get on and pray. If you need more information, if you want to be able to sign up, then all of that is on our website, which is loutonbaptistchurch.org. And of course, any questions that you may have, they can go through the office. Thanks again for being with us this morning, everyone. A special welcome to Mark. We're really pleased he's able to join us this morning. I'm going to hand over to him now. Well, good morning. My name is Mark Craig, and it's great to be with you uh, this morning. For nearly 20 years, I was BMS's Director of Communications until earlier this year when I retired from that role anyway. And it's really great to be with you this morning. I'm still a supporter of BMS uh, and it's in my role as part of the BMS speaking team that I'm with you here this morning. Let me uh, just uh, share with you one of the questions I'm most often asked in all these years that I was with BMS and it was, what's more important? Is it world mission or is it local mission? Well, you can argue these things endlessly and people do and I've heard them do it. I think my view would be uh, taken from Oswald Chambers and in, his, uh, in one of his books where he says, the light that shines furthest shines brightest near home. And if you translate that into mission, well, if your light is going to shine to the furthest, darkest parts of the earth, then it needs to shine brightest near home in a missional sense. So my thinking would always be Give give your priority initially to local mission, because if your commitment to local mission is flying along and your church is engaging more and more people in local mission, then you will develop a sense of that same mission to the ends of the earth. And that's the way that it works in my experience. And I've seen it so many times in churches. So let your light shine brightest near home in order that it can shine furthest would be uh, my reflection on nearly 20 years of talking to people about this. And we'd always encourage churches like yours to work really hard locally, because that's where you make your reputation, that's where you cut your teeth missionally, that's where you learn the things that will take you to a commitment to the ends of the earth. But before we go any further, let's uh, read together and uh, let's read this morning from uh, First Chronicles. Chapter 16, from verses 8 to 25. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, 
and the judgments he pronounced you his servants, the descendants of Israel, the chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you, I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my appointed ones, my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. That message is, uh, is one that's been around forever. And uh, we're going to dwell on some of that just today. For many years, BMS's slogan was make Jesus known. And as BMS's interest in a number of countries grew and grew and grew, I remember the day when one wag in the office said uh, we should change make Jesus known to we're all over the place. And it didn't take very long before that was dismissed as an idea. But there is a prevailing sense in the church in these days that somehow we're just not getting there in reaching the world with the love of God. Whether the world is the world immediately outside your church door, outside your own home front door, whether it's in your neighborhood, whether it's in the wider world, there is a prevailing sense in the church that somehow we're just not getting there. The world is a tough place for the gospel. And in some parts of the world, the name of Jesus is now most commonly used as a curse. And in countries like India, there are other challenges where Prime Minister Modi only very recently made it clear that one of his key aims is to remove Christianity and Christians totally from India in the coming years. However, I hope the reading from Chronicles makes your heart sing. And I hope it outlines for you the sheer majesty and glory of God. The plan outlined in First Chronicles, it hinges though on what we understand by the phrase declaring God's glory and his marvelous deeds. At BMS, that doesn't always mean what you might imagine it means because uh, you would perhaps imagine that declaring the Lord's glory means preaching um, and talking about him as I'm able to do with you this morning. But in some contexts, that's fine around the world. There are lots of countries where you can indeed preach the gospel and share the love of God openly. But there are others where you really can't and where these countries are effectively close to the gospel and were you to preach on a, uh, on a street, um, it wouldn't take very long before you and everyone you know uh, was taken in for questioning. And BMS works in some of these countries. And then there are other countries which you might imagine, it's fine to go preaching the gospel and to be evangelistic where in practice, it really isn't. And those countries would include places like France, just across the water, where it actually is very difficult to do community evangelism without official permission. And even here in the UK, the notion that you can stand on a street corner and preach the gospel unhindered is becoming much more, uh, much more difficult. It's much more difficult to do that in a way that 25 years ago would have been absolutely unthinkable that there would have been any problem with that. But there is now. But be in no doubt whatsoever, everything, and I mean everything, 
BMS does with the gifts that you entrust to us, the gifts of people, the gifts of money, the gifts of prayer, everything is focused on reaching out to others with the grace of God and the love of Christ. Wait a minute, I hear you say, hang on. Does that mean that you don't do preaching and you don't do aiming for conversions anymore? How does that work? Well, the wisdom that's normally attributed to St. Francis of Assisi can help us here, which is preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. What does that mean? Allow me to let you into a big secret. The thing in mission today, the big cool thing in mission today, and it's the background to St. Francis's ancient wisdom, is the idea of holistic mission. The idea of mission being what, what it needs to be. But hardly anybody knows what that means, and even fewer know how it works. If you bear with me in two minutes time, you'll all know what it means, and you'll all know how it works. So let's uh, have a look at an image. The, um, the, the details of the slide don't matter. The fact that there are seven columns does, and the titles of those columns do too. So let me uh, share this with you. So here we are. This graphic here was developed in order to show uh, progress on a five-year plan we had together. The numbers don't matter. The columns, however, do. And you'll see the title, Church, Education, Justice, Development, Health, Leadership, and Relief. These are BMS's seven ministries. And holistic mission for BMS, all it means is an appropriate mix of these seven ministries in any particular location. And that's the answer to why mission work in different countries looks different. Because in some countries, the biggest things that are needed by communities might be health and education. And in that sense, what you'll find from BMS is that our mission mix prioritizes health and education. In other countries, you may find that justice and development are the big needs. And in those countries, you'll see that these are prioritized. And in still other countries, you may find that church and leadership ministries are the biggest things the community is calling for. And those other things you'll see reflected in BMS's portfolio. All of these are there to some degree in most countries but they always have preeminent ones depending on the local context. So these seven ministries deployed in a particular way for a particular context in a particular country. Lots of my colleagues live and work in countries where you really can't openly share the gospel. You really can't stand on a street and read from the gospel. And that's okay because we adjust the mix in those countries. And the church ministries are uh, of lesser importance for the time being in those countries because taking St. Francis's words, we show the, the love of God and the, the grace of God in other ways. And the mix of course changes over time because countries that one day were closed open and then church ministries become more appropriate. But it's important, and it really is important, that you don't hear that as BMS doesn't preach the gospel. Because we do. And we do take the love of God and the love of Jesus into people's lives, even in places where, for the moment, you can't preach. I once visited Afghanistan um, and met a tribal leader um, whose name was Mohammed Ghul. Um, it means flower of God. And Ghul was a big man. I'm six feet two. And for one of the few times in my life, I felt, felt small standing beside a man. He must have been six feet seven. And this huge man um, he took me by the hand and led me through his village to see a little power station we had put in, a little hydroelectric power station. 
we had put in with the villagers to provide them for the first time ever with power. And he took me and we stood beside this channel the villagers had cut to channel water towards the little turbine. And he said to me, do you know, people have made us promises. He said, the Americans came here and made us promises. The Russians came here and made us promises. The Taliban came here and made us promises. The only people who ever kept their promise are you Christians, because you said you would help us to look after our babies and our babies don't die in the cold anymore. And he led me to another little building in which was this row of baby incubators, all powered by this little turbine. And all the little houses had light. It was only one bulb, but they all had light. And this row of incubators has stayed with me in my head forever. And in that country, you can't preach the gospel yet. But that's okay, because you adjust the mix. But these kind of restrictions are new. And let me give you three examples. In the early 20th century in China, people said the country would never open to the gospel. And BMS workers were there in those days, and they were funded and supported by faithful people up and down the country here, perhaps including your great grandparents. And though those faithful people giving allowed BMS workers to serve in non-preaching roles and to impact communities with the love of God. People like James and Agnes Russell Watson, whose names you won't know, uh, but they founded a little college uh, in a remote area of China to teach local women basic nursing skills. And this was long lost in the history of, of BMS, this, this um, little college, until about 15 years ago when a package arrived uh, unsolicited at BMS. And when we opened it, it was a book and the book was all in Chinese. And so one of our staff who reads and writes Chinese uh, translated it for us. And they said, this is a college who are asking us to go to a significant anniversary and to be there with them because they refer to BMS in the book as the mother institution. And so a couple of our trustees and a couple of our staff headed off to, to China to join them for this anniversary, having been invited to discover that the college that James and Agnes founded all these years ago now has 18,000 students. And they all refer to BMS and to James and Agnes as the founders of the college. And there in the foyer are huge bronze statues to Christian missionaries, James and Agnes Russell Watson. And it's a remarkable testimony that in a country which at the time people said this will never open to the gospel, they were serving there in non-preaching roles, faithfully supported by people like your great grandparents. And they impacted the community and they shared with the community marvelous deeds. And of course, China did open to the gospel and BMS was there. Later in the 20th century, in the mid 20th century, people said the same thing about Nepal. They said Nepal will never open to the gospel. And BMS's workers were there and uh, they were working in, in non-teaching roles funded by people perhaps like your grandparents, faithful people who gave year after year, praying that countries like Nepal would open. And in the end, towards uh, the end of the country, just before it all opened up, BMS worker Peter Harwood was there. Peter was an engineer and uh, he remains the, the leader of one of the only World Bank projects ever to run on time and to schedule. And he directed the building of a dam in, uh, in China in his role as a BMS mercenary. And uh, Peter was presented with uh, Nepal's highest honor to a foreigner, which is a medal which says on it, most trusted friend of the nation. And I've seen and held that medal. And it is quite remarkable that a, a nation presented this to one of my BMS colleagues to say, on behalf of everyone who worked with, on this, you are the most trusted friend of the nation. 
And of course, Nepal did open to the gospel and BMS was there. And then later in the 20th century, people said the same thing again about the country of Albania. Albania will never open to the gospel. And for years, BMS workers served there, putting together uh, initiatives and projects and non-teaching roles to help a country recover from years upon years of uh, just difficult circumstances and difficult government. And in non-teaching roles, they took the love of God and God's marvelous deeds to the community there. And they were supported by people like your parents. And of course, Albania did open to the gospel and BMS was there. Let me show you a short piece of film which helps you to bring that story up today. So you've heard about the early 20th century with perhaps your great grandparents being involved, the mid 20th century with perhaps your grandparents being involved, the late 20th century perhaps with your parents being involved. So what about you in your day? Let me, let me show you. And so there you have it. That brings it right up to date about what you, in your day, fund with BMS. One of my favorite stories is reflected there in Peru, where the shot you saw of the pastor on the river um, is him going to a city, which is the largest city on earth that you can't get to by road. Now, the city is called Iquitos in Peru, and the only way to get there is to fly or to go by boat. So, uh, but the bigger thing is, you know, that what that shows is that in our generation, need has a name. And the name of the need of the name of those people. And so for people like Taban in Afghanistan, looking after her baby, for Sandra in Mozambique, rebuilding her house. For Charles in Uganda, growing enough food for his family. These are amazing things, which your support in our generation brings close to some of the neediest communities on the planet. And through your partnership with BMS today, you're already a partner in declaring the Lord's glory and his marvelous deeds right across the world. Everything we do is co-funded by you and everything we do is partly your ministry. And in our generation, we need to commit for the long run like your parents did, like your grandparents did, like your great-grandparents did, 
commit for the long run in countries which are the few remaining ones where it's not possible to have a church or to preach the gospel openly. And these are countries like Afghanistan and North Korea and one or two others. These are in some ways just the last man standing. And they will open, just like China and Nepal and Albania, all of which people said, these countries will never open to the gospel. Be in no doubt, they will. And when they do, we will be there. And faithful people like you and your generation will be the ones who made it possible. Your prayers, your giving, your sending of people. It may be quick, it may take years and years, but we will dig in for the long run together as the people of God through our faithfulness in declaring his glory and marvelous deeds amongst the nations. And our children, well, they will add the names of these countries like Afghanistan to the list of China and Nepal and Albania, the countries people said would never open to the gospel and did. And they will thank God for this nation, this generation's faithfulness. And your successors in Lawton will know that and they'll be proud that you were part of that. Just like if it applies to you, you at this moment, you're proud of your mom and dad for their support of mission work and your grandparents and great grandparents. I'm proud that they were part of making Jesus known. So go and tell everybody you can of the glory and marvelous deeds of God those in the past, those in the present, and those still to come. So thank you, bless you, and may you also know the glory and the marvelous deeds of God in your own life. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that Families and people up and down the generations have committed to supporting your work across the world for supporting the development of churches and other ministries, even in the places where people said can't be done. And through your power, of course, it was done. And for the country still to open, for the work still to be done, for the prayer still to go in, for the giving still to come. Lord, we thank you for all of that. And we pray that you will take our efforts and you will bless them and use them for the glory of the kingdom. And as that happens, Lord, may the glory go to you. Thank you for your blessings across the years, Lord, to everyone here, everyone listening. And here are our thanks and our prayers as we offer them in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Why don't you join us on Zoom now for some virtual tea and coffee. See you later. See you later.